Hi everyone, I'm Ellie, founder of Code of the Future, and today I'm going to be continuing with the Matplotlib tutorial series for beginners by showing you Matplotlib's default X and Y axis. So I'm going to put my glasses on as usual and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, perfect. So I'm starting where we last left off in the previous video, and I'm going to be showing you Python, and I'm going to be showing you Matplotlib's default X and Y axis. Okay. So We've done some things previously. We've created different arrays and we've plotted different plots, just so it doesn't interact. It doesn't just so it doesn't interfere with anything further that we're going to do. I'm just going to comment stuff that we've done previously, uh, just so it doesn't interfere with what we're going to do now. So matplotlib's default x and y axis. So previously we've plotted two different arrays and we've put them together and we've noticed that matplotlib's pairs points like this. So 0, 40, 30, 72, 12, and 80, things like that. Now, you're probably wondering well, what happens if I don't put both arrays, what happens if I just put one? So let's create a new x-axis. Let's create a new x-axis or x-axis that we want to plot. So numpy, so numpy array, and we're gonna probably just go, let's say 10, 20, 30, 100, okay. And then let's say we're gonna, we're gonna plot it. So we'll say plt.plot, and we'll just put x, and then we're gonna show this. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. So bear in mind we're plotting the x-axis here. Okay, so notice what's happened here. So we've got these points here. We have 0, 10, 20, 30, 100. And notice that these are going up the y-axis. So essentially, if you input any default array, let's say you want to input a certain array, what it's going to do, what it's going to do is it's going to plot that along the y-axis in this specific case. And what the x-axis does is it will do a default. And what that means is for the first point, it will do 0, for the second point it will do one, for the third point it will do two, and so on and so forth. So if I was to put some extra characters in here, so we've got zero, one, two, three, four. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Let's say I was gonna do seven different points in here. And we run this. Notice now that it goes from zero to six. Essentially, however many numbers you put in this array that you're gonna plot, just one array that you're gonna plot, it will do it along the y-axis and it will take the length of the array that you have so in this case we have seven and it will do it up to that number minus one and it will include zero so equally if i had another one in here we'd expect it to go up to maybe not that large we'd expect it to go up to seven because we have eight numbers and eight minus one is seven there you go seven so this is something that's worth remembering and this is what happens when you just simply put plot an x value what i'm trying to show you in this video is that if you were to just plot plot one array with you know some random numbers in it the matplotlib's default is to automatically assign those with numbers from zero to the final number being one minus the final number being the number of elements in your array so here minus one so here seven so whatever you put on this side it will plot them but it will assign them with numbers from zero to you know whatever number it may be so seven in our example so that's just something that's worth remembering this is very handy and it's worth mentioning you don't need to create you know a y a y variable it, it is very handy i think for the ease of this video i'll just change this to an a just so we don't get confused between x and y axis and i'll just make sure that's plot a what's handy with this is it means that you can plot so let's say you've got a class size you know of 10 students and in that student you i don't know take their shoe size so you can create a, an array like this one with their shoe size and then when you go to plot it, it will say, you know, first student, second student, third student has this. And it shows you a good trend. It means you don't have to just put one zero to, you know, how many students there are. That's why it's very handy. And also it's just something that's worth bearing in mind. It's very handy and it's something that I used when I did my internship, or my programming internship. Very handy, simple thing, you know, just omitting an argument in here and it plots it very nicely. So that has been the video today and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support this channel even further, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and also check out my donation link in the description. If you could give this video a big thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it and comment any questions you have in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer. But for now, I will see you all in the next video.